What's up, socials? Thanks for being here. I thought I would just sit down with you and chat. Actually, I'm gonna answer questions because this is hashtag Ask SSS, really original around here. Because I love Twitter so much, I went to my Twitter and I asked you to provide me questions to answer and here's what you had to say. Simon said, wait, Simon says, oh no, we're not doing that today. Simon says, with SSS beta now here, what's your one must do tip for those getting involved? Make a video every day in August. That's literally the only rule. <laughs> this is so, so important because every time I talk to people about really any aspect of life or business that they need help with, consistency is the biggest issue. So the entire point of this challenge, if you're not familiar, SSS Veda, vlog every day in August, is just for you to say to the world, I am going to post a video every day and I'm going to not give up, but if I miss a day, I'm going to come right back and get back on the horse. That's all it is. Your job is to just show up. So that is literally my only tip. My biggest thing with this is making time. It doesn't matter if you plan to live stream or do Instagram stories or actually make a video and edit it and post it every single day. If you don't schedule that time in, you are set for failure. I have set myself up for success because I know perfectly well that in wedding planning and client serving mode in August, I will not be able to press publish every single day. But I am going to talk to the camera every day and include it in sort of a montage of my vlogs from the week for you guys to enjoy. That's another tip, just make your own rules. I mean, it's fine. This is literally just for you to practice talking to the camera. Here is a tweet from my friend Meg who was at my creative live class, which is so cool because I hadn't met her in real life before. So just thought you should know. She tweeted, should you give 48 hours between video posting during non-Veda? If you have momentum with a video or should you post the next day? This is an excellent question. I actually don't think it matters at all what that momentum is because there is about 48 hours of time on YouTube that a video is trying to get its bearings and figure out where it's gonna land on the scale of same as usual, better or worse. YouTube takes a couple of days to get those analytics just right. So that's the amount of time that you have to prove that you brought the heat with this video. So I actually think that you should wait if you can, especially if it has momentum, but even more especially if the video is not performing and it needs more attention. Instead of posting something new, you should be out getting it more attention, meaning finding new ways to promote it and market it and give people a real reason why they might want to watch it. If they don't, and I guess it's all over for that video. Now, if a video is doing really well, then let it continue to fly. But I actually think when you see something is trending in a positive direction, the best thing that you can do is try to create something else new off the back of that to send people that might be new discovering you because of that project to another thing that they're really going to like. So be prepared for your editorial calendar to shake up a little bit. If suddenly you're seeing a spike in views, maybe there's something else you can do to take advantage of that opportunity. Maybe you should go live on YouTube, maybe communicate with some of those like new subscribers or viewers. Uh, you really should be paying attention to your analytics for every upload because you never know when there's a new opportunity to come about. Here's what a tool tweeted. How can you be expressive in video and audio when you aren't naturally expressive? I like this question because it is being asked in a new way, although most people ask this same question to me all the time. Just because you don't think your personality is video ready doesn't mean that it isn't. It actually means that you're looking into yourself a little too much, judgy judging, instead of thinking about who you're doing this for. I would argue that instead of thinking, how can I be more expressive? Just look at the camera, that lens, not yourself in the thing up there, that we ignore that person. We're looking at the lens of the camera like it is a person. My person is Charlotte. Hey Charlotte, hey girl. Sidebar real quick. I know we were just talking, but I have to explain why I'm talking to you. Because I know her, 
because we talk to each other because I understand what she's going through. I don't have to worry about how expressive I am because I'm literally just thinking about her. And if she were sitting in front of me right now, this is how I would be talking to her. That is how you become more expressive, but even more importantly, the expressive version that you are, not somebody else. Okay, girl, let's get back to it. Emma tweeted, do you promote your channel on all social media networks or do you like one more than the other? What do you think of Snapchat? Let's start with the last question because you got three in there, you lucky duck. Snapchat has a lot of credit due to it. I have always said about Snapchat that the reason it became successful is because it took the phenomenal jump cuts of YouTube and handed the ability to do that outside of a professional editor and computer to the average user on a smartphone with one button. Like literally. Because you can only record 10 second clips, I think on Instagram they give you 15 seconds because that's the max amount of time. Every time there's a new clip to the story, you're forced to recorrect attention. And so that's what a jump cut really does. And I, that's why I think Snapchat absolutely came out of the gate brilliantly because of that. Not to mention the disappearing act situation with the content, which is great because so many people are like, oh, do I want this on Google forever? Mm. Probably not. Instagram is definitely one of my favorite to promote any kind of content that's happening on my channel in terms of social media. I also really love Twitter. I absolutely love Twitter because it's like the OG of real time conversations and that's just phenomenal to me. I know that I can go to Twitter and tweet something and my friends will be there to talk back to me. Now I know that the same is true on Facebook, but the relationship is so different. It's just, it's very different. I like to share life events on Facebook. So I have the Facebook brand page, but it's sort of like third place, but important, but third place. So I would say that my favorites are Instagram, Twitter, and then Facebook. Those are my favorites, and I think that they're all super important, but I also think that you should choose where you're gonna be really, really good and stick with it and use those networks as well as you possibly can, be invested in them, not just promoting stuff, but actually having conversations with people, because otherwise none of those things are going to matter. Andre asked, what is your greatest vlog achievement in your vlog career so far? I feel like I could call anything a vlog achievement, but I'm not really sure what I would pick to be the greatest, the greatest of all time. What is the goat? I think probably the greatest vlog achievement of all time is figuring out how to do it in a way that I can communicate so that people understand me and what I stand for and therefore was able to go after the life I want and leave my full-time job. I still think that big, big, big move that I made in 2010 was a huge achievement. I've done a lot of things in the meantime. I've certainly achieved a lot of things. I've reached a lot of goals. I made music videos. I got on the radar of some of the coolest people in this industry. I, you guys know I'm super pumped. I just spoke at Creative Live. That was a huge goal for me. But being able to stand on my own two feet because of something I built and continue to build something else because of it, that's, that's probably the greatest so far, I would have to say. Christina tweeted, to keep up with the 31 vlogs, are you still going to follow the three bucket strategy? Christina is talking about my bucketing strategy, which I go over in the book, Vlog Like a Boss. And so there is sometimes a three bucket strategy or sometimes you can have more than that or less than that. Even if that's the case, there's a couple of things I wanna, I wanna define here. SSS Veda is very much meant for those people who are not used to posting on a regular basis and certainly for the reason that they don't talk to the camera like it's a person yet. They have to start practicing that skill. So this may or may not come before you actually have a bucketing strategy. Bucketing can come next when you're getting more fine-tuned, 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 fine-tuned about that content going forward. If you are just getting used to talking to a camera, you probably don't have your buckets yet. You probably don't even know who you're talking to yet. So that really defines a lot of that. If you look at the SSS Veda landing page, you can see that we actually provide topics to talk about and they probably have nothing to do with anyone's bucket strategy because they're the most basic questions so that you actually have something to talk about that day. So you could decide to go with buckets or you could do what's on the calendar. It's completely up to you. 
I know I'm pretty sure on my bucketing strategy and I'm also not actually gonna be posting 31 days this month. So I'm going to be sticking with my usual strategy and trying to fit in sort of the, the, the here's what I'm up to kind of vlogs because I know that's a lot of what everybody wants to see in August. So yes, there is still a bucket strategy in this for me. There's still so much I wanna share with you guys and I have to put that out in a strategic way much like I talk about in the book. So I guess the answer is yes ish. Salma, my friend Salma tweeted, are talking head videos not enough anymore to grow a channel? Do you need more B-roll, cutaways, fancy schmancy edits happening? You're probably gonna be surprised to hear what the answer to this question is. I actually think that in order to grow a YouTube channel, you need not as much of this as you think you do. Now, you really do need to have good video content to keep attention these days. That being said, on a YouTube channel, someone is looking at a photo and a couple of words in a title to decide to watch. When someone's making the decision and they click on the video and it's actually exactly what it said it was going to be and you delivered on information or you provided some form of entertainment, as long as you made good on the photo and the title, then you're fine. You may not need B-roll. You may not need fancy schmancy. You may not need any kind of cutaways. I advise them because they can keep the conversation a little bit more interesting here. But if you don't have them, it's not necessarily make or break. It's totally make or break on Facebook. Totally. If you do not have something visually compelling, they can't even hear it. It's shown up on the newsfeed. You have to make it more visually interesting for somebody to be pulled in. On YouTube, if you deliver and you just sat there and told people what's up, kind of like this video is about to be, <laughs> that's enough. You do need to have sort of those pillar pieces that you do. Every once in a while, go crazy and get away from your bookshelf and do a musical book review. And that's the kind of thing that's sort of like that hero content that helps you elevate the channel a little bit. But you don't have to have it every time if you're really good at communicating. Always nice to have though. Always nice to have. Robert tweeted, what program do you use on a PC to edit videos for a beginner? When I started editing videos, I was on a PC. It was an enormous computer that took up my entire kitchen called a gateway. Oh, that's funny. Remember the gateway? In 2007, I used Windows Movie Maker, and I know that that still has to be in existence because I hear about it all the time. You could do that. It probably came with the computer software. Perfect option. There are also other things I've made videos about in the past, Adobe Spark, and that's a web client. You don't even have to download the software. It's very simplistic video editing, but it's readily available for you. Unfortunately, I think I heard YouTube is killing their editor, which is sad because it was always nice to be able to suggest that like just upload your content to youtube and stitch it together in youtube it's so easy it's brilliant and now they're killing it so i guess that's not going to be a thing anymore but there are so many apps you could literally have an app on your phone forget the computer you can edit it on your phone that's why they're probably killing it because there's so many other options and they're very cheap here's what myra's tweet said i want to participate in veda can i vlog daily with pre-recorded content why yes you can that's how i got away with veda for so many years getting ahead of schedule as much as possible it's completely up to you this is literally a choose your own adventure challenge if the end of the day the thing that you have to do is post every single day you pre-recording all of that stuff and getting it done is very impressive because even if you only do like five days at a time or, or even less than that you are still practicing talking to the person behind this little lens here and that's really what this is about that's it so if you can upload a video every day you fulfilled the challenge. I'm even breaking the rule. I made my own darn rules. I'm not even gonna upload every day, but I'm going to try to share my life every single day. And that's all that matters because I've pretty much proven I can show up when I say I'm gonna show up. So I say when I'm gonna show up and I do show up. This is for anyone who is working on their ability to be consistent. So if you can be consistent, batch recording is a great idea. Thank you so much for chiming in on those questions. Those are really, really good video questions. I'm glad we knocked a couple of those out. Today is the first day of vlog every day in August. Why? Because it's August 1st. So if you're watching this and you were thinking, oh, <laughs> I missed my opportunity to join a challenge that will probably kill me. You have not 
gotten here too late. You can go to SavvySexySocial.com slash SSSVEDA and sign up. And signing up literally just means entering your name into the Google form so that everybody can see who's participating, subscribe to each other, like each other's videos, comment, support each other when we're feeling really weird about the fact that we're talking to a camera. We are here to support each other. That's the entire point of this. Show up, support, that's the deal. I want you to do one thing before you jump off this video, and that is to hit the subscribe button if you have not already, and of course, that bell that will notify you anytime I have a new video so that you don't miss my VEDA episodes, because I want to share them with you so that we can talk to each other on a regular basis, because it's going to be very regular around here. That's what VEDA is all about. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Remember to subscribe for good vibes and to go after after the life you want. Cheers, La Croix for the win.